Hello everybody, welcome back for another video. Hope you're all doing well and that you're all having a great day. Uh, crypto is always a very interesting place. There's never, ever, ever a dull day. Uh, we have a lot of news about crazy things happening in the background. Also some, I guess, maybe some warnings, if you kind of want to call it that. Without further ado, let's jump right into it. Uh, this kind of matches, remember I told you all before, there are people who are very into crypto who kind of... Uh, they scan the blockchains that we have out there to see if anything uh, fishy is happening on any type of cryptocurrency platform. Uh, like I said, all of this can be checked uh, very easily. I found information on the channel before that is just a couple of clicks on Google. Uh, but what we have now is that people are, and I guess maybe this may have picked up a bit more because of the actual uh, bear market that we're actually in right now. People have been trying to figure out exactly where transactions are going, uh, more so because sometimes it may seem like something behind the scenes may be a bit fishy, uh, but uh, let's jump right into it. It says, something fishy took place in the world of Ethereum on the 1st of December in 2018. New analysis from AI-powered blockchain investigator ORS CryptoHound has uncovered unusual activity on the Ethereum blockchain, which took place last month. ORS CryptoHound took a look at one at the 100 largest Ethereum transactions from the last quarter of last year, and in doing so found a strange pattern in the blockchain's wealthy elite. Here we go. They said the six, six of them, wealthiest wallets, all transferred a sizable sum of Ether coins on the date in question, December 1st, totaling around half a billion dollars at the time of the transactions. Each of the six wallets in question contained 92 to 98% share of the Omise Go tokens. The wallets were all created on the same day. The wallets all cycled their holdings via, via multiple transactions in a notably similar manner until all of the initial tokens being tracked were divided equally among 39 new wallets containing exactly 150,000 ETH between all of them. So for those who are keeping track, they looked at the 100 largest Ethereum transactions, found six of the largest wallets. For some reason, on December 1st, they had around half a billion dollars inside of the six wallets, and they cycled all of them until they created 39 new wallets that each had a share of exactly 150,000 Ethereum from the six largest wallets. Because part of the question comes into uh, people are always uh, pointing the finger at other projects, talking about how un- uncentralized and you're super centralized because you have so many coins and i've said this before about many other projects not even not even just bitcoin not even xrp which always gets all the flack there's so many other coins out there that we know uh where one wallet or two wallets control over 51 percent of all the tokens so i assume that these uh wallets came in question especially since the uh value of ethereum has been slipping uh as of late one could say so I assume that half a billion dollars among six wallets was probably uh, raising a few flags in people's uh, heads. It says, clearly the transactions from the six wealthiest wallets in question were all coordinated. But why? Though the team behind the investigation did not exactly point fingers, it did suggest that one or more Ethereum whales, or prominent stakeholders, attempted to make the project appear more decentralized than it really is by separating the aforementioned Ether coins and the Omise Go tokens. This would be done to make Ethereum appear to have more integrity. Fabrizio Fontana, a chief analyst of the ORS CryptoHound research team, hopes that the AI-driven investigative tool may be used to highlight similar oddities in the future. Stating by the way of the press release, he said, This investigation is one of the early cases studies showing AI's potential in blockchain and cryptocurrency analysis. Our goal is to provide a free and easy-to-use platform for anyone who wants to collect as much data as possible about a specific blockchain address or transaction. This is going to continue happening. Uh, there are many coins out there. It's not just XRP as much as everybody would like to think so that are doing things like this. Uh, but I think it's... Uh, this also happened sometime in 2018. It happened after uh, Charlie Lee sold his Litecoin. Yes, he sold them. He didn't donate them. You can Google it. He sold them. Uh, people were questioning exactly how many he had. It didn't appear that he had that many. And the people were kind of combing through the other uh, crypto creators. And there was a huge moment where people were trying to figure out exactly how many coins that uh, Vitalik had. And apparently he holds a, a nice chunk of them. 
he ended up disclosing what he said were his wallet addresses and how much coins that he had. Uh, it was a fairly sizable chunk. There are many people on these platforms who own, uh, who are the creators of them, who may have been the first people to be able to mine them or uh, got a portion of the pre-mine. And they own sometimes one to two million of these coins where there maybe only are 100 million of them. And you have to also think behind the scenes that they're probably also mining them themselves. Who knows exactly how deep this goes. Uh, but these, I, I, I think a lot of these questions will eventually be solved, even though, uh, it seems a little weird. Like I said, you know, when you have, when you make claims that you are hyper decentralized, or you can do all of this and you are so and so and so, uh, it's very easy to find the truth because, uh, we can see everything on these, uh, blockchains, but let's move on. Next up, local bitcoins is in the news. The popular peer to peer Bitcoin trading site known as Local Bitcoins has supposedly been compromised. Founded in 2012, has it been that long? Local Bitcoins has become one of the most popular peer to peer Bitcoin trading platforms worldwide. It allows users to post advertisements where they can state their desired exchange rate and payment methods for either buying Bitcoin or selling Bitcoin. Interested parties can actually agree actually to meet in person and purchase the Bitcoin for cash or to trade directly using online banking. The Bitcoin are placed in the platform's web wallets where users are able to pay for the purchases directly. Just recently, we had reported on the vast increase in the popularity of the platform among Latin American people in the continent. According to the thread on Reddit, when visiting the URL leading to local Bitcoin's forum page, users are prompted to log into their account as if they had been logged out. This only happens in case the user is already logged in, concluding that this is a phishing attempt, sending users two FA codes to the hacker. Uh, I've seen stuff like this on many different platforms. I can't even remember over the last like two years where I've seen stuff like this. Uh, if you have ever been in a situation on any platform where you are constantly logged in and then for some reason you're logged out, uh, I usually close that page and try to go to another browser or if it keeps happening, message the actual people who are running the website to ask them if this is, is, is normal. Uh, you One, you should not always be logged into your uh, cryptocurrency exchanges in the first place. That is a big no-no. If something doesn't seem right, log out, close the platform, try another browser or actually email the people themselves because a lot of things like this are happening and they're fairly easy to actually pull off. Uh, withdrawals on the platform have reportedly been temporarily halted. The platform has also disabled its forum. Here it is right here. Uh, so not much was taken. Stuff was still taken. Around eight Bitcoin uh, were sent to this uh, Fisher, the person who was actually taking uh, or trying to take people's money. Had around, he was around 28,000 US dollars. So while not a substantial amount, no one still wants to be stolen from uh, so please make sure that you are paying attention to what's happening. Uh, this is only going to continue. This is only going to increase. This is not something that's going to simply fade away one day. Um, I don't know exactly how secure local Bitcoins is. Uh, I would probably say, in my opinion, maybe don't meet people in the street uh, to trade cash and, and Bitcoin. That may not be the uh, safest thing in the entire world. There was news that we had in 2018, multi, I think three or four times. I think the most craziest one was something that happened in, I think it was Sweden or, or in Denmark, uh, where I think someone was attacked because they had, I think, a couple of thousand dollars on them and they were trying to buy Bitcoin. So be aware of what you're getting yourself into. Uh, try to just use a trusted name if you are uh, desperately trying to uh, get Bitcoin and or cryptocurrencies. This kind of follows the same uh, idea. Someone was asking me in the uh, in the live chat yesterday about uh, my thoughts on getting into like the Bitcoin ATM business. Uh, this is another risk. I didn't even think of this yesterday, but lo and behold, there's an actual article for it. Uh, there, this was this happened apparently in California in a bakery. So uh, if you thought you were safe. Uh, they're also targeting bakeries now where apparently, I don't know if it's one or two men, they were, I think, attacking the wall with a sledgehammer. Yep. Uh, trying to get the ATM open. They couldn't open it. And I think they just kind of destroyed the wall, took the entire thing with them. I'm not, I can't play the actual video because of copyright laws and what have you. So uh, if you have been thinking about or maybe getting into the crypto Bitcoin ATM business, 
Uh, this is probably something you may want to think about as well. Uh, this is also, and it's 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 very fascinating because I think no matter how much we try uh, to think that we're going to have a hyper decentralized or a a sharing world where we have this, you know, monetary utopia. Uh, there's always one person who kind of uh, ruins it for everyone. Uh, we could have lived in a world where uh, we had, you know, millions of Bitcoin ATMs all over the place. Uh, but there's always one person who uh, robs and cheats and steals and takes stuff from other people. Uh, so you have to really think about this if you're thinking about getting into the business. It is something that's going to continue happening. And also on that, on that same exact note, uh, this is part of the reason why I'm still certain that uh not that things like this won't exist in a while i think they're going to exist like you know everyone in every city uh you know you have atms inside of the actual like banking kiosks machines you know the you know where there's like seven of them lined up together but then you also have the situation when you walk down the street in neighborhoods and you see like there's like an outside atm or like one that's like inside of like a little corner store or something like that uh i think these will always continue to exist uh but i am almost certain if cryptocurrencies continues on the same path that they have been going over the last couple of years, uh, we're going to start having banks issuing the Bitcoin ATMs themselves, and they will be inside of their uh, banking terminals, inside of their banks. Uh, be I mean, yeah, sorry to spend too much time on this. It's just the fact that uh, a lot of this stuff has been happening. So please make sure that you are protecting your cryptocurrencies because uh, people are... I, I want to s desperate in general, like money is kind of tight for a lot of people right now. And uh, just the fact that you can take a sledgehammer, walk into a bakery and take out the money that's inside of the the, the, the machine. And also one can only assume uh, that they know how to hack into it as well and maybe get the crypto that's on it. Anyway, just thought I'd uh, mention that. But uh, let's uh, move on. Uh, Next up, Litecoin is in the news. Singapore headquartered digital asset exchange known as Huobi Derivative Market on the 25th of January launched the contract trading of the seventh largest cryptocurrency known as Litecoin on its platform. The launch was announced on Huobi's official Twitter handle with implementation of the contract with the leading crypto exchange. LTC will become the fourth digital asset to be registered along with Bitcoin, Ethereum, and EOS. Sorry. Enabling Huobi users to trade the digital currency for the first time on the exchange. Here's the actual tweet for it that they sent out. The minimum margin of 1x leverage is 100%. 5x is 20%. 10x is 10%. And 20x is 5%. Uh, scrolling down a little bit further, just so we can breeze through this one. Here, did I miss it? I missed it. There we go. Following the latest contract in a statement... The CEO of Huobi Global, Livio Veng, said, uh, Litecoin is one of the biggest of the altcoins on the market today, and we've seen quite a bit of demand for it by our users. He further announced the launch of other altcoins. He said, we'll be adding more coin types to the platform as 2019 progresses, with XRP next on our list. So, uh, folk, nice that they're adding XRP. Wonderful. Uh, focusing a bit on Litecoin. Remember when I said before, uh, I'm not hyper bullish on Litecoin. However, if it continues to gain support, it will show me that there's probably going to be a a nice potential uptick in price for it in the future. And this is kind of one of the things that I was talking about. The more that Litecoin gets added to different platforms, uh, I think this will secure a strong future for Litecoin. I'm not going to say the Litecoin is going to be uh, one fourth Bitcoin of the Litecoin is going to be the number two coin, uh, but I don't see it dropping to like the number three hundred spot. I think as as Litecoin continues to get more support from other major platforms, uh, it will have more lasting and staying power. So it's very nice to hear that this has actually taken place. Let's move on. Next up, Backed is in the news. Crypto platform known as Backed, a subsidiary of the Intercontinental Exchange has released new details about its upcoming Bitcoin futures product. According to the specifications published on ICE's website, the trading screen product name of the contracts will be Backed BTC USD Daily Future, and each contract will be one BTC in size. Backed will offer one-day physically delivered futures. 
There will be no daily price limit and prices will be quoted in US dollars. The minimum price fluctuation will be $2.50 per coin per contract, which can go down to 0.01 per BTC per block trade with a minimum of 10 lots. A position limit of 100,000 lots in any contract date will be applied. A 50 cent combined exchange and clearing fee per side will be charged. There's a pretty photo of the what I can assume is the backed website and or backed app. Backed futures were initially expected on the 24th of this month, but at the end of December, ICE published a note stating that the launch date will be amended pursuant of the CFTC's process and timeline. The platform is still waiting for regulatory approval from the U.S. Commodities Futures Trading Commission. So uh, people keep asking me if, if backed is going to happen. It appears as of right now that it's actually going to happen. I don't see any reason why uh, backed would not take place. It's more like a when is this going to happen? Uh, like I stated before, uh, the government shutdown in the U.S. is apparently temporarily halted for the course of a three-week period. Uh, so hopefully within that time frame, something actually ends up taking place. But it is nice to still hear that at least twice a week we're hearing from the backed people or the Intercontinental Exchange or the New York Stock Exchange, whatever you kind of want to call them, about exactly what uh, their platform is going to be. We still have not heard specifications as to exactly which companies are going to be uh, allowing cryptocurrencies as a payment method on their platform. I can only assume this is once again because of the delay. I feel like if this had already launched, we would have heard uh, the 2.0 information, but I assume they're holding all of that back, maybe trying to onboard more companies, which is also a good thing. Uh, but yeah, this is still happening. So very good news. I find this far more important than a than any Bitcoin ETF could even think of possibly becoming. Let's move on. So um, I wouldn't have used this exact title uh, for those who aren't looking at the screen. It actually almost hurts me to even say this. Uh, the article reads, Venezuelan president gets wrecked as the Bank of England won't return its gold worth $1.2 billion. Uh, once again, when I talk about the how the crypto industry is going to change and we're going to have more uh, professional uh, articles and stuff like that in the space, this is kind of what I mean. Anyway, uh, Article title aside, uh, this is actually very significant for cryptocurrencies. It has to do a little bit with politics, which I don't like touching on this channel. Uh, but I think it's almost impossible in this day and age to kind of separate uh, politics from cryptocurrencies, if you kind of get what I'm saying. So I'll read through it, and I'm, I'm pretty sure you'll get it, and we'll discuss it a tiny bit. It says, Venezuela is now going through an economic crisis and hyperinflation, and now the country's president, Nicolás Maduro, in his effort to hold onto his plunging cash pile, has been trying to pull uh, $1.2 billion worth of gold out of the Bank of England. Uh, but the bank has denied Maduro's official re request after the U.S. officials, including National Security Advisor John Bolton and Secretary of State Michael Pompeo, lobbied their U.K. counterparts to cut off the deal, reported Bloomberg. The UK is now actually following other countries and recognizing the National Assembly leader. Uh, so there was like a, a mini coup that took place in like two or three days ago in Venezuela. Uh, not going to really touch it on that. Uh, the $1.2 billion worth of gold is a big chunk of the $8 billion of foreign reserves held by the Central Bank of Venezuela. The US officials are now trying to steer the overseas assets of Venezuela to Guiado to help him take control of the government. According to the recent CNBC report, the gold holdings of Venezuela and the Bank of England have jumped after it closed a deal with Deutsche Bank. In December, Venezuela's holding in the, in the, band, in the bank doubled to $1.3 billion after Venezuela returned the borrowed funds from Deutsche Bank AG. Since last year, the government of Nicolás Maduro has been seeking to re re repatriate uh, $550 million in gold from the Bank of England on the fears that the gold could be caught up in the sanctions of the country. The Bank of England has been facing political pressure from the British Parliament and Venezuela's opposition to not assist Maduro. Uh, the point is, uh, there was something that I was reading, and it was very, it was very fascinating. It it spoke about, um, it, it it had to do with what we were talking about a couple of days ago about the idea of hyper Bitcoinization and exactly what's going to trigger it. This is why I said I said I don't like uh, political talk on this channel because this channel is about making money, uh, but it's kind of hard to miss the signals. When a country who is falling apart because of economic mismanagement 
uh, is trying to take back their money from another country, but that country says no. Uh, when you talk about the, the, the economic future of the world and where we're going and why uh, cryptocurrencies, and I guess maybe on this discussion, why Bitcoin is very important, it's because this would not be able to happen if their money had simply been put in Bitcoin or in cryptocurrencies. There's not a situation where you bought 1.2 or had $1.2 billion worth of Bitcoin and you tried to move it around and the US or the UK said, no, you couldn't do that when that money is sitting in your own wallet or sitting in a vault in your country. Uh, we're going to, at some point, see a, a large amount. Of, and I, I think we're already seeing this movement. I think a lot of people think that we are not. I think you are heavily mistaken. Uh, we have multiple countries around the world right now who are talking about creating their own cryptocurrencies. I personally believe that these things are going to fail because um, everyone's trying to... I can't even think of like a good analogy. Everyone's trying to create their own thing that won't be interoperable with each other. We have at least seven countries around the world who are trying to build their own cryptocurrencies. Uh, these won't be uh, swappable coins. We're going to have another situation where, and I don't think they know this, where they're either going to have to build up their infrastructure together, which they're not, because everyone is trying to do the same thing at the exact same time in their own corner. They're going to have to probably end up swapping this into stable coins, which is going to be another problem because stable coins are highly regulated by many governments around the world. Their only answer is probably going to be to steer all their money into a major cryptocurrency, like one of the ones that we have right now, and start using that amongst themselves. And when that happens, uh, the crypto hits the fan. Everything goes completely insane. The point is, remember when we were talking about before people liquidating their gold and stuff like that, and why we why we have these uh, measurements of Bitcoin's price going into the trillions of dollars is because of situations like this. Like you have to understand that, uh, regardless of what may happen in our lives, what our daily day to day is, uh, there are economic wars that are actually happening behind the scenes. That you know we may have these uh, government officials shaking hands and smiling on television. Uh, but behind the scenes, they don't trust each other. They're trying to get their money from each other. There was a situation, uh, I think in, it was 2016 and 2017, where I think Germany was trying to get their gold back from the Federal Reserve, and the Federal Reserve said no. And like a day or two later, uh, Germany was on the news shaking the U.S. president's hand. And it's kind of like these really weird situations that you know that things are happening behind the scenes where people are... Uh, desperately trying to get their money back there was also the news what was it a couple of days ago where the some some u.s ambassador had threatened uh germany with like sanctions if they didn't do something the only way forward <laughs> that seems the most logical uh we know multiple countries are starting to drop the u.s dollar uh there's discussions about them uh potentially taking up the uh, the I think it's called the Chinese renminbi or renminbi I, I, I can't remember exactly how to pronounce it uh we're going to see a movement very quick. You cannot tell a country who is collapsing economically that they cannot have their money back. That's not going to be a thing in about 10 to 15 years. It's also going to... One thing that fascinates me and I guess also scares me about crypto is that it's it's completely uncharted. Like so many of the things that are happening right now, I think are people uh, jumping into it because they simply don't know exactly what the future holds for them if they don't i i don't know if that makes sense like we're, we're entering vastly quickly rapidly into a situation where we have things like this happening and before 10 15 years ago you couldn't do anything like there was no situation even if we go back to like 2002 where a country had sanctions against them and they were like well we have to go to this you know meeting with all the other countries and smile with them there was no other option and now we have a thing where as a country, you can put your money into a, a cryptocurrency that other governments can't stop. And you can even have, you know, a situation where you just swap coins amongst the, these other countries. I, I don't know. I find it incredibly fascinating. Like I said, I, I, I didn't want to get too deep into the, the, the specifics of exactly what's happening within these countries. But it's incredibly interesting that... We're, 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 and I, and I can feel that we're, it's probably already happening or that we're going to enter a space very, very soon. And I'm just waiting for the, for the first country to kind of like for the first domino to fall to announce that they are using Bitcoin, um, openly because we know that it's happening behind the scenes, but I think they're trying to accumulate as much as possible. 
At least that's my personal opinion on the situation. To kind of finish things off, remember I mentioned yesterday, I said every single time that I even think of buying cryptocurrencies, I take a step back because I used to always do it every single time and I used to always go, I'm going to buy some. And in the moment I wake up, prices are always going down. It's kind of how the uh, cryptocurrency market goes. I don't know if I'm like a, uh, maybe I have to like, you know, if, if I have a situation where I, I think um, I'm going to buy some and then I don't and the prices go down, maybe I have to think I'm not going to buy any and then just buy some and then the prices will go up. That doesn't make any sense. Just thought I'd uh, throw that out there. But anyway, I guess coming out of the weekend, there's been no significantly crazy news. But as always, the prices of cryptos are down at the moment. Ethereum is down 7%. Bitcoin Cash is down 7%. Not not too many uh, heavy hit coins, if I can kind of say that. Tron's also down by 7 Stellar's down by 10 I think one of the only coins that's up right now, where is it somewhere around here, is Holocoin and and pundi x uh i've looked into these coins um yeah i i thought about making like a video on them and i honestly did and i mean honestly 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 so many people were asking me at least like 10 15 people were asking me about to to make a video on these coins uh i looked into them if you if you want my uh full opinion right now without having to make a video uh these coins uh, do exactly what many other coins already do. I think they are just receiving an enormous amount of hype at the moment. I'm not exactly sure where the hype is coming from. Uh, but these platforms are very like I'm. Wait, which one was? It? I, I think it was Pundi X. They're uh, like a a payment platform. I'm pretty sure it was Pundi X. They note themselves as a payment platform where you can send cryptos back and forth securely. We already have other cryptocurrencies that do that on their own blockchains back and forth. Especially when we have atomic swaps, we won't need platforms like that and where 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 did hollow go hollow chain i can't remember exactly what hollow chain was i think it's like a smart contract platform or something like that i i mean if if you if you feel the need deep in your heart to support these platforms by all means go for it you've probably made some money i hope it's worked out for you uh these are coins that already do what many other coins do uh so many coins out there are just copies of other coins right now and they keep claiming that they can do what other coins can't, or we are slightly faster, or we have more transactions, or we are more secure, or we are more private. Um, until any of those coins make, and, and, and I was going to say top 15, make it top eight. Until any of those coins reach into the top eight, uh, it kind of is what it is. They are just copy coins. I uh, hope you all enjoyed. Hope you all are having a great day, a great morning, a great afternoon, a great evening. Hope you all have a great Monday. I think it's Monday. I'm, I'm never, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's Monday. New start to the week. Um, hope you all enjoyed. Uh, yeah, very, very, crypto is a very odd place. Um, it feels like it's only going to get odder. I feel like there's something like lurking behind the scenes that we just haven't been told yet or something that is going to completely change the way that we see crypto. Anyway, uh, not too much longer uh, before we should possibly have some type of clarification as to when. Backed is going to happen as to when the NASDAQ is going to launch their cryptocurrency trading platform. But as of right now, uh, prices, I mean, prices are going to go down regardless. Uh, but yeah, uh, as always, as always, as always, as always, a very, very special thank you to my Patreon supporters. Vlad the Impaler, Gil Boa Snake, Rai Rai, Brady Neilds, and L Doug. Thank you all very, very much for your generosity. I do appreciate it, and as always, see you.